Hello viewers, this is Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mike here with you. Uh, in this video I would like to share with you a method that I've come up with to uh, measure the values of inductors and capacitors. Um, to start off with, I'd like to share with you a little bit of uh, just very brief information about how the VNA works. So, uh, in this circumstance here, the VNA is hooked through a transmission line. So here's your nano VNA, and then I've got a 50 ohm transmission line, and it wraps around, comes out to a pair of alligator clips, and then I attach those to my device under test. So what the VNA does is it sends a stimulus or a wave down the transmission line. Um, this, by the way, is the reference plane where I've calibrated the nano VNA to, um, to examine this as our device under test with reference to this plane. So that calibration plane is right here at the end of these uh, alligator clips. This is how I've calibrated and I'll show you how I did that in a second here. It's very, very simple. So what this does is it sends a stimulus, a wave, down to the device under test and then it looks at what's coming back. And it's looking at the amplitude and the phase of of the, the difference between the stimulus and the uh, reflected waves. And from that, the, the VNA is able to determine um, all of its um, information. Okay, so there's three different configurations a person can use with the Nano VNA to, um, to, to perform this test. Um, there's a shunt, a shunt through, and a series. And I've chosen the shunt method because it's the simplest and allows me just to use alligator clips. There's no test fixture or anything special. And I, I guess I should make a note. The other reason why we can get away with uh, such crude calibration and um, text test fixture is because the frequencies that we're using are quite low and the uh, parasitic elements that come with having such a um, um, basic setup is is significant at higher frequencies but down in the frequency ranges that we're going to be working at it's very minimal so we can actually get away with having a, a setup that's this simple and it actually works. So in previous attempts to make this video I never showed um, viewers how I did the calibration. So it, it's a simple open, short, and load calibration that's done on the uh, Nano VNA. So this is your open state. Um, the short calibration, you simply clip the alligator leads together. And then for the load, I have an RF dummy load here and I simply clip the black onto the outer ring in the center. I hold that to the center pin and believe it or not, as I hold that steady, and it settles out and I'm able to get a fairly decent calibration at 50 ohms on off of that. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it works. Yep. I know uh, you RF engineers out there watching this, you probably shouldn't be watching this because it's going to make you cringe, but <laughs> anyhow, it works. So I've gone ahead and hooked the inductor back up to the um, alligator leads here. And uh, the, the thing with calibrating the nano VNA is you kind of have to have an idea of what range of frequencies you want to test in. And I've gone and calibrated this from uh, 10 kilohertz up to 20 megahertz. And uh, you can see that's plenty enough um, frequency range to be able to to uh, take a look at this inductor. Actually, it's probably too much. Um, interesting thing here, you can see that this reactance here has uh, done something weird. Um, this is the point at which this test fixture, uh, the inductor and everything that's here becomes resonant. So uh, let's just go up and take a look. You can see right now I'm measuring 15 micro henries of inductance. Let's just go ahead and, and adjust that down a little bit. Okay, so here's the thing. If you measure, I know I've had some comments that said, well, it doesn't really matter what free or what frequency or phase angle you measure the capacitor at. You just hook the thing or the inductor at, you hook it up and you just read it and that's the value. Well, it does change, well, a little bit as you get closer to where I think you should be measuring. But if you look at it here, we get up closer to this resonant, like we're at 18 microhenries here now. And if we go all the way up here, 
to uh, okay so this becomes resonant at around 10.8 megahertz and you can see that it's saying that our inductor value now is 74 microhenries and if we keep on going something even more interesting happens uh, we go beyond um, um, the the phase reversal point uh, where the phase drops below zero degrees and we're now reading our inductor as a capacitor so that's not going to give us a very uh, accurate answer there so on the converse if we go too low in frequency I'll go right down to the bottom here again we're not getting the right value so what I do is I take and I adjust the nano VNA so that I'm looking at the values um, that it sees when our the impedance of our load is equal to the transmission line or the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and the characteristic impedance of the nano VNA which is 50 ohms and what this does is it ensures that we are nowhere near that frequency of resonance and um, also, uh, and I'll, I'll make reference to this in the notes below. Um, there's probably no need to go into this in this video. We're trying to keep it simple. But uh, generally speaking, the shunt method is considered to be accurate on VNAs for um, impedances of between 20 and 200 ohms. So this 50 ohm value is nice and convenient. It fits within that. Um, it it solves quite a few problems so I I use this to get me uh, what I consider to be accurate readings for both inductors and and capacitors okay so we've come back to the nano VNA and you can see that we've got quite a span here so I'm I'm gonna adjust this down to say 5 megahertz and then we're gonna see if we can get a little closer to that 50 ohms um, the, the other thing I guess I should mention is that inductors, yes, there's a little bit of resistance there, but they're primarily reactive devices. So if we look at the reactants and we make the reactants equal to the characteristic impedance of our VNA and the transmission line, which is 50 ohms, it's going to be pretty close. And the other check that we can use is um, is if we go to 90 degrees phase angle on, on the uh, Smith chart, that that is... Um, equivalent to minus or plus one plus one j uh, imaginary and if we rotate all the way around that's basically well here is 50 ohms this is zero ohms and then we rotate up and around on the chart here for the inductive side to this value here and we get to um, 50 ohms uh, reactive so that matches our characteristic impedance and solves our uh, inaccuracy problems. We don't have to be right spot on. As you can see, our phase angle is at 87 degrees and we're at 52.6 ohms of reactants and we're measuring 15 microhenries is the value of that of that inductor. So let's just go up and down a little bit and watch watch our value of the inductor. If we go down to 30 38 ohms at 104 degrees here it's still 15 microhenries and if we come up a little bit and we go you know up in frequency it's still 15 microhenries um, so we're we're in that range it's it's just that I prefer to try to stay close to that 50 ohms so that everything matches up nicely anyhow so uh, 15 microhenries is what we are measuring off of this um, inductor and uh, the value, the actual value of the inductor is, so we can see a brown, a green, and a black. So brown is 1, green is 5, and black is 1 again. So 1, 5, and a 1 multiplier is 15 microhenries. What do you know? It worked. Okay, so I've got my capacitor hooked up here now. Let's see if we can use this same method to uh, determine the value of this capacitor. Um, so I'm going to once again go to that 50 ohm point where the reactance is equal to the uh, transmission line impedance and we're at 90 degrees on the Smith chart. There you are. And uh, so there's 90 degrees. There's our uh, reactance. Uh, the uh, capacitor is fairly close to 50 ohms. Uh, 
and what do we read? 907 picofarads. So let's take a look at this capacitor and see what it is. If I unclip this and we'll flip over here and we'll read that. 102. So that's a 1000 picofarad capacitor. So capacitors are kind of well known to have a fairly broad tolerance range and uh, so if we take that value that we read off that capacitor um, compare that to um, the value that's marked on it and take into account that the fact that these things are are good to plus or minus uh, quite a range um, I, I don't know exactly what this one is it might be plus or minus 10 percent or something to that effect so uh, I'm gonna call that reading good but Anyhow, that is how you measure inductors and capacitors, and um, I guess I'll, I'll cut it off here and leave it at that. This is version 3 of measuring inductors and capacitors, and uh, I'm going to send this one off to uh, internet land and see how it is received. Anyway, thank you for watching, and 7-3. Uh,